coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll update you on some of the issues, policies, and regulations that may impact your operation. Plus, find out all you need to know to attend this year's NCBA Legislative Conference in Washington, D.C. From the Denver headquarters of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, it's NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Ochsner. As the voice of the cattle industry in Washington, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association makes a difference for cattle producers. Every day, the DC staff work on a number of policy and regulatory issues that could impact the U.S. beef industry. We've got an update on what's happening in Washington, D.C. in this week's Beltway Beef Spotlight. A lot of big news coming out of Washington, D.C. Leading that list is the decision from USDA and FDA on how they are going to move forward with the regulation of fake meat. This is a big win for NCBA and one that we've been working on for well over a year now. And what it does is it gives the jurisdiction to FDA to look at the overall safety and development of the fake meat product. And if FDA determines it's safe to come forward and go into the uh, retail chain, then USDA will step forward and will do the daily inspection of the product. But more importantly, USDA will have the ability to approve what label goes on that product and what it's called. And that's what we're going to spend probably most of 2019 working on is trying to determine exactly what that product is going to be called. In other big news, we have had the announcement from the Department of Interior that they're going to delist the gray wolf from the endangered species list. Another big win for cattle producers across the country because what it does is it shows that the Endangered Species Act can actually work when you take in the overall effort between landowners, state and national groups, and the government to put in true conservation practices. We're going to use this as an opportunity to encourage Congress to once again revisit the need to reform the Endangered Species Act. And of course, one of our big issues for years now has been the reform of waters in the United States or WOTUS. That is in place, but EPA has taken comments. And it's important that you, as producers, step up and comment to EPA because we need to make sure that they know that there is broad support among producers across the country. So go to our website, policy.ncba.org, to find out how you can also engage in this process. Again, we have a lot of opportunities here in Washington, D.C. These are some of the top three, and we look forward to coming with you uh, with more updates here in the future. Want to stay on top of the issues in Washington? Just follow the Beltway Beef feed on Twitter for all the latest updates. You can also help support the work done on Capitol Hill by becoming an NCBA member. When you join, you'll receive the Beltway Beef Newsletter, a weekly update straight from NCBA staff in Washington, D.C. It's easy to join. Just call 1-866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org. There's a chance coming up next week for you to join us on Capitol Hill and have your voice heard. Joining us now with more on the legislative conference is Kendall Frazier, CEO of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Kendall, for vo those viewers who may not be as familiar with legislative conference, let's just start by talking about how does the conference itself work? Kevin, we bring in our state affiliates, and cattlemen from all over the United States to spend a few days in Washington, D.C., meeting with their congressional delegation. And also we have meetings with the regulatory agencies at the Department of Interior, EPA, USDA, the regulatory agencies that we work with. So it's a chance for us to interact mm -hmm with the cattle industry and the government. It's a very important policy conference for us. Lots of staff time and lots of volunteer time goes into that conference. Why is it so important for the cattle industry? Because it's important that the regulatory agencies and the people there in the Trump administration and the congressmen hear directly from cattlemen back in the states. Yeah, because that's who's really put them there. And NCBA has a presence in Washington, D.C., but we're only as strong as our state organizations are and their relationships they build with the uh, people in Washington, D.C. 
And it's also important because we go in and talk to them about our priorities for the cattle industry, and we articulate that, and we have discussions about those with the people in Washington, D.C. And so for folks that are already registered, what should they expect? And for folks that may not be registered, how can they get registered to join us in D.C.? If, if they're interested in going, they can go on our website, beefusa.org, registered, come in. I would encourage them to contact their state cattlemen's association so there's some liaison work going on there because our state cattlemen's associations will really head the delegations in Washington, D.C. But just go on and register. It'll have all the information about the location, the times, the schedules, the hotels, all the information about the conference. Super. And what are the key topics that uh, you folks will be discussing with our leaders? Here are some of the topics we're going to be talking about, and those will be our policy priorities for this year. Mm -hmm. One of those will be fake meat. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that USDA is the regulatory agency that takes the lead on the regulation of these new alternative protein products. Trade will be another issue we'll talk about uh, in Washington, D.C. We'll also talk about the dietary guidelines and that process that's starting. And we'll also talk about uh, several regulatory related issues uh, regarding private lands, public lands, uh, transportation related issues, tax uh, related issues that we'll be talking to both the congressional delegations and the Trump administration officials. Lots of topical issues that have direct impact on those of us at farms and ranches across the country. Uh, why is it so important given those issues for folks to be an NCBA member? Well, it's extremely important because we have a united voice. We can do things and our state cattlemen's associations can do things that you can't do as an individual. So we are so much more effective when we speak with one voice on these issues in Washington, D.C. And we have a full-time staff in Washington, D.C. that represents cattlemen every day on these important issues. You and the rest of your team have a busy week ahead. We wish you great luck for a very productive week in our nation's capital. Thank you, Kevin. NCBA's Legislative Conference runs next Tuesday through Thursday in Washington, D.C., and it's not too late to attend. You can register on-site or ahead of time on our website. Just go to ncba.org for all the details. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen and Cattlemen, we'll explain how consumer demand for sustainability could impact your operation. And We'll also examine some of the new ways the industry is working to promote beef to those consumers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Don't miss the 2019 NCBA Legislative Conference in Washington, D.C. It's your opportunity to meet with congressional leaders and federal agency influencers to let them know where cattle men and women stand on critical issues that impact the cattle business and our way of life. Make plans to be in Washington, D.C. April 2nd to the 4th, the 2019 NCBA Legislative Conference. Together, we can do more. Details at ncba.org. The elements can be relentless. Make sure they have respiratory protection to match. Run with us on a John Deere 3E series tractor and add an attachment or two because it's time to turn this land everything on it, as far as the eye can see, into your land. Nothing runs like a deer. Run with us. Search John Deere 3E Series for more. Today's consumers want to know where their food comes from and how it was produced. And the answers can often impact their buying decisions. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Matt Fleck explains why it's important that all beef producers tell their story to help reassure consumers about the industry's commitment to sustainability. When you're spending the day gathering cattle or working them through a chute, it can be easy to forget that the value of your product ultimately depends on consumers choosing to buy beef. 
That basic reality is why one of the sessions at the 2019 Cattlemen's College focused directly on consumers. Today we talked about what consumers care about when it comes to the beef that they're purchasing. I obviously, given my focus, talked a lot about some of those sustainability pieces. You know, we talked about how they're interested in learning more about how the food that they're eating is produced. So it's not just about what the food is, but how was it slaughtered? How was it grown? How was it raised? You know, we're seeing trends where folks are more interested in learning about some of the well-being and the welfare issues around the animals. I think once they get into it and understand it, it is an opportunity for them to tell their story. But they need to be involved, they need to understand what those consumers and what those customers are truly looking for and, and understand their perspective, because it is different than ours. The speakers from Cargill emphasize that the U.S. beef produced today is of high quality, with a greater percentage grading choice or prime than in the past. Even so, they say consumers today want to know how that beef is produced, and it's up to cattlemen and women themselves to help tell that story. The future is going to be a little bit different than it has been in the past. It's not just about producing quality cattle. It's about telling your story on the things that you do to, to take care of those animals through their life. They understand that we want to keep animals healthy. And all you got to do is, is talk to them about the processes you do and how important that is towards your family. This is a family-driven business, and that's extremely important for us to share. I think just telling better stories about what we're doing is so critical. There's so many amazing things that are going on in our beef supply chain. Really, ranchers that are doing great things in the landscape and with their animals. Sometimes we just don't do a good enough job of telling those stories more broadly. Um, but I also think it's you know continuing to drive progress. The North American beef supply chain is one of the most efficient supply chains in the world. So let's take credit for that and then continue to drive progress in that area. In addition, the speaker said working to improve cattle care and adopt best practices through the Beef Quality Assurance or BQA program is an essential way to build consumer confidence in beef. I think the one point I was trying to get across is everyone should be certified in BQA and that that's going to continue to grow and be more important part of our supply chain, whether it's an animal handling or an animal welfare or some of those topics. Again, it proves to our consumers we do take care of our animals, we do take care of our land. I was so excited that there were people standing in the back of the room today. To me, it means producers are engaged in this topic and they, they really want to do the right thing in their own operations and to drive value for consumers. And when consumers see value in beef, beef demand follows, helping to keep cattlemen and women doing the job they love. I'm Matt Fleck, reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Growing beef demand is an ongoing concern for both NCBA and the beef checkoff. Russell Nemitz has a closer look at some of the new ways the industry is working to promote beef to consumers. Well, without question, there are some very exciting things underway in the U.S. beef cattle industry right now, promoting that wonderful protein that all of us like in this industry, beef. And with us on Cattlemen to Cattlemen to talk about some of those exciting things is Lauren Mayling. She's the executive director of the Arizona Beef Council. And really, without question, there are some fun and exciting things going on. Tell us a few of them. Absolutely. We have our flagship slogan, Beef, It's What's For Dinner, that's still carrying all of most of our consumer campaigns. And beefitswhatsfordinner.com is a go-to for recipes, nutrition information, sustainability, resources on how cattle are raised. In conjunction with that, we now have, you can meet Chuck, because Chuck knows beef. Um, Chuck is the Chekhov's artificial intelligence that we can use on our at-home speakers to learn more about Chuck when we're cooking beef, to learn about recipes and nutrition information. And, um, and to just learn more about Chuck while we're in the meat case and shopping as well. Well, there seems to be a lot of excitement out there in the beef cattle industry, and we've talked about a few of them. I mean, we've got some great spokespersons out there as well promoting beef as we know it, including the Cowboy Ninja. Lance Picas, the Cowboy Ninja, has been a really excellent way to promote beef as a food for strength while prom um, competing on the American Ninja Warrior, um, but training at home in the ranch in Idaho. He's really been able to take those ranch skills and ranch workouts uh, of um, bucking bales of hay and breaking ice on water troughs into functional skills to compete at a national level, all while promoting beef as a food for strength. 
Yeah, and what a better spokesman than a rancher himself who's actually out there producing it. And he takes this new role very, very seriously. He certainly does. He's a great advocate for fitness workouts from taking the, um, the farm to the farm to fit programs and being as fit as a rancher because we all know that our farmers and ranchers are fit, strong people. Um, and of course, we eat beef every day too. Well, what's incredible to me is the amount of work and the cool things that we're doing with the $1 per head checkoff on a, really on a national scope, a very, very small budget compared to maybe some of the others out there. Certainly, there's so many programs that the beef program beef checkoff program encompasses. And for us producers in the countryside, we can go to a brand new website, drivingdemandforbeef.com, and it highlights all of the work from the beef checkoff contractors. Um, that ranges everything from beef exports and the value of those across the, the global market, um, all the way to beef she, which is beef sushi. And we're gonna have an Arizona taco inspired roll, sushi roll made with beef, of course, coming soon. It's pretty cool to think about what we are doing. And when you look at the big, big picture, seems to me that producers nationwide continue to sp support the beef checkoff. Overwhelming support for the checkoff when we really understand and appreciate all that the checkoff work does for us um, while we're at home on the ranch raising uh, and taking care of cattle um, from everything from the state beef councils to the national level to all the contractors that are working hard for the beef checkoff program to promote beef um, near and far. Hey, last question for you before I let you go. I mean, we're also, uh, there's a big focus out these days, the younger generation, uh, the millennials out there and trying to get them uh, even more excited about uh, eating and using beef at home. Certainly, and for using things like AI, artificial intelligence, and Chuck knows beef so that we can take where um, millennial parents and millennials are trying to find how to cook beef and learn about how cattle are raised right on their smartphones. And so we're giving them the tools that they can easily access that right in, their, right in their hands. Hey, we appreciate you stopping by and visiting about all the great things that are underway right now with the beef checkoff and the activities, not just in Arizona, but across the nation. Again, we've been speaking with Lauren Mayling with the Arizona Beef Council. With that, we'll go ahead and send it back to you. You can check out the Beef It's What's For Dinner website for a great interactive experience. You'll find things like recipes, information on beef cuts, and nutritional information at this one-stop shop for all things beef. Still to come on Cattleman to Cattleman, we'll introduce you to a great organization that encourages and assists female artists that work in the Western genre. Stay with us, we'll be right back. When it comes to the beef business, there's no room for gray area. The decisions being made in Washington affect the future of the beef industry, the livelihood of your fellow farmers and ranchers. Your National Cattlemen's Beef Association knows there's what benefits cattlemen and there's what doesn't. To us, it's as clear as black and white. Visit joinncba.org to learn more. Looking for an advantage in your cattle business? Then join the wave of commercial cattlemen who are seeing the value of Hereford Genetics. Breed back is just absolutely phenomenal. I'd say probably 80% of our keeping heifers were baldy this year and just can't say enough good things about them. Since we started using Hereford bulls again, I've for sure probably seen 15 to 20 pounds on our weaning weight. I think our Hereford baldy heifers, they'll be a little more fertile, have a little more longevity. Hereford bulls and females maximize the value of your herd, improving fertility, feed efficiency, docility, and more. Hereford really has a big impact over uh, other breeds when it comes to that heterosis and hybrid vigor. It's really humbling to visit with these cow-calf producers and see these 100-year commercial ranches coming back to Hereford. They've seen the differences, they've seen the genetic progress, they've seen the difference in the cattle. The science shows Hereford genetics pay. Don't miss out on the Hereford advantage. Discover the bald-faced truth about Hereford genetics at the website herefordtruth.org. Women have always played a significant role in ranching and the Western way of life. 
Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Kate Maher has more on a recent event that celebrated these Western women. More than 1,500 women, men, and families recently met in Phoenix, Arizona for the inaugural Art of the Cowgirl event, featuring master Western artisans and horsewomen. So we have really the who's who here, from our clinicians, to our artists, to our sponsors, to our vendors. It's so fun that we see all of the, of the generations, those of us who are leading and those who are coming up. I knew I wanted to combine art and horsemanship. We're calling it Art of the Cowgirl because we're really honoring women in the industry, but it's really a celebration of our partnerships. Tammy's passion to keep the Western lifestyle alive led her to look at ways Art of the Cowgirl could help encourage individuals whose dream is to carry on the Western way of life. During the event, two fellowships were awarded that will allow the recipients an opportunity to train exclusively with an expert. Like ranching, the Western trades is so important to keep alive. If we don't teach the next generation, they're going to be lost forever. So to me, it's very, very important to mentor and give. And so that's what Art of the Cowgirl is about. Our mission for Art of the Cowgirl is to provide fellowships to fund upcoming and emerging artists, whether it's a fine art, photography, horsemanship, or the trades. I learned about the Art of the Cowgirl Fellowship through Facebook. Um, I saw that they were having Lee Smith be the master um, horsewoman and I've been following Lee for a number of years although I've never been to one of her clinics and one day I got a phone call so that was pretty exciting. The fellowship program is twofold. Number one, it is really honoring and recognizing the women who are makers and, and horsewomen. And then it provides the opportunity for someone to come and learn the trade. And we are funding the whole thing. We are paying the master to teach. We are funding all of the expenses for the recipient, travel, living, all of the materials. The fellowship through the Art of the Calgary program is helping me to get to a mentor like Nancy Martini and learn from her the fundamentals and the basics and everything on how to build a saddle. Working with Lee is going to be uh, such a dream come true and I am so excited to get started. I mean, she is so, she's such a talented horsewoman. For me, to keep the Western heritage alive is so important because it's what, what my life and my heritage and my family was based around. The Art of the Cowgirl uh, program is so important because they are helping people that might not necessarily have the opportunities to um, pursue mentorship with some of the people that they have, uh, the masters that they have. Um, it helps people to really start their businesses and it's just really incredible what they've done here. The, the whole event is such an inspiring, inspiring time. I would absolutely encourage other artists to, people to get involved in this program. Um, they've been so inviting and welcoming and just open about wanting to grow the artists and promote it even more. From the Art of the Cowgirl event in Arizona, I'm Kate Maher reporting for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Want to learn more about the Art of the Cowgirl or how to apply for one of the fellowships? Just visit their website artofthecowgirl.com. And we're pleased to be joined now by livestock product specialist Reed Bear with Case IH. Reed, we're standing in front of the popular Maximum Maxim tractor and I understand you've made some distinct improvements to the tractor. Tell us about those. Right, so the Case IH Maxim lineup is very versatile. We now have three transmission options, an active drive four, our new Active Drive 8 transmission that we're really excited to tell you about, as well as the CVX Drive. Fantastic. Tell us more about that Active Drive 8 and what you've done to change that up a bit. Right, so this Active Drive 8 now gives us a 24 speed transmission. It's a semi power shift transmission, so we have eight gears per range, three ranges. What that does is that gives us a wide span of gears that we can shift through with no torque interruption, so it's greater working versatility uh, when you're out in the field. 
We also have some added features in this transmission, auto features uh, okay. that will allow this transmission to shift for you. Uh, it comes really, really handle, handy on the road as well as in the field. Right. And then some advanced transmission features as well. So we've got a brake to clutch, memory shuttle, smart range, and a smooth shift that all reduce operator fatigue uh, and really increase the comfort and versatility of this machine. That's phenomenal. So as we think about some of the operations that we as beef producers uh, do, and obviously you've got us hooked up to a baler right now, uh, what are some of the specific advantages that uh, producers might find in uh, this new flexible transmission? Right, so we can option this tractor way up or we can keep it pretty standard. What that allows us to do is get a lot of technology integrated into this machine. Mm -hmm. So we can do anything from basic chores around the farm or ranch uh, as well as your most uh, uh, challenging tasks uh, out in the field. That's fantastic. And you know, Case IH has uh, a long time been a, a uh, big, big company in terms of providing uh, tools that make our jobs easier. Uh, it's not just for grain farmers, is it? Right, no, at Case IH, we really do support this livestock industry. Uh, we back it 100%. We've got a full lineup of tractors, hay and forage equipment as well. Uh, anything to meet those producers' needs. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming to the show and sharing with us uh, this new technology. We appreciate that. Absolutely. If you're interested in learning more about uh, Case IH or any of its products, go to caseih.com. When we come back, we've got some great tips on marketing and promoting your cattle. That story and more when we return. At Case IH, we believe it's our job to provide you with solutions. That's why our Farmall and Maxim tractors, as well as our tools and attachments, are designed with you in mind. From mowing to baling to loading and more, we're here to help turn your to-dos into to-dones. At Case IH, we'll keep your days running smoothly with equipment that's durable, versatile, and highly efficient. No wonder farmers are more loyal to Case IH than any other brand. Visit your local dealer or go to caseih.com forward slash livestock for more. How's your production on pasture? Are profits down? Are weight gains down? What are you going to do about it? Do something cost effective. Do something that will make a difference. To add the first and proven leader in feed through horn fly control to your cattle rations, ask for it by name, Altacid IGR. Have you ever been in your pasture and thought, my cattle look great, but how do I get more people to know about them? Russell Nemitz has more on a recent Cattlemen's College session that offered tips on how to market and promote your cattle to a wider audience. Well, marketing your business without question can be one of the scariest things alive if you're a business owner. But if you're in the food business, it's also mission critical. And marketing your operation was one of the sessions at the 2019 Cattlemen's College here at the Cattle Industry Convention and in CBA Trade Show here in New Orleans. And with us on the segment today is one of the presenters, Ashley Grant, with Ranch House Designs. She's their chief marketing officer. And before we go any further, maybe just tell us about yourself and a little bit about your business. Well, my name is Ashley Grant, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Ranch House Designs. We are a graphic design, creative marketing agency focused on the livestock and ranching industry. We do everything from logo designs, websites, print designs, and even full marketing plans as well for cattle operations all the way up to large nutrition companies and big businesses in the ag industry. Well, it was standing room only during your session here in New Orleans. Uh, talk a little bit about what the session covered when it comes to marketing and promoting your agricultural business? Well, when it comes to marketing any ag industry business, the main things we want to focus on is building a great foundation. What's your story? Who's your audience? Who are you trying to reach? And why is your business a great business people should believe in? So once you've built that story, then how do you market it? So of course, we like to start with a col with your colors, your logo, your business name, your slogan. And then from there, taking it to the next level, marketing through building a professional website, doing Facebook advertising, email marketing, print ads, and then connecting all the dots together to reach your customer base and really tell your story and promote your business to the world. So with that said, the do's, are there any don'ts that we shouldn't be doing? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, some of the don'ts that were covered was Photoshopping of 
uh, your animal's photos. So if you can't fix it with a brush and some clippers, you probably shouldn't be doing it. No fixing top lines, no stretching them. Um, don't want to change the structure of the animal. That would be a big don't. Um, any other don'ts? Gosh, that's a really tough question, but yeah, that would be one. Well, one thing about it, consumers today and really the, the, the society out there here in the 21st century, they want to have that connection with their food producers. So it's really important that we tell our story in American agriculture. Absolutely. A great way to tell your story is through having a Facebook page, having a website, having a blog, giving that authentic look into your operation. You can have a professional polished website, but we do also want to give that inside look. Maybe it's an embarrassing story. You got your truck stuck in the pasture. Those are things that people relate to, and it's really going to make your business something real, something tangible that prospective customers can relate to. Are there any other take-home messages from your presentation here at the Cattle Industry Convention, Ashley, while we have you on the program? I would just say in any of your marketing, be real, be authentic, be honest, and consistent. Consistently show up and be generous for your customers. And being a reliable person and a reliable business is something that's more important than any flashy logo or fantastic website. It's all about being a real, authentic rancher people can relate to. And if somebody really has a question out there, because we want to set them up for success, certainly not set them up for failure, is there a website that we can go to learn more about you and your other presenter? Absolutely. You can go to ranchhousedesigns.com. We have a lot of information about the services we offer, and we also have a learn tab with a lot of free resources, free marketing resources for ranchers that they can download free videos and a great way to get started building your marketing plan before you bring in the professionals. Awesome. Well, thanks for being with us on Cattlemen to Cattlemen today. Thank you very much. All right. Again, we've been visiting with Ashley Grant, the CEO of Ranch House Designs, one of this year's presenters at the Cattlemen's College. Kevin, with that, we'll go ahead and send it back to you. Now, if you were unable to attend Cattlemen's College in New Orleans or if there was a class you missed that you wanted to see, the good news is that all the sessions were recorded and will be available for viewing online. Just visit ncba.org and click on the Producers tab for all the details. Still to come on Cattleman to Cattleman, we'll visit an award-winning cow-calf operation that is committed to providing the best care for their animals. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Don't miss the 2019 NCBA Legislative Conference in Washington, D.C. It's your opportunity to meet with congressional leaders and federal agency influencers to let them know where cattle men and women stand on critical issues that impact the cattle business and our way of life. Make plans to be in Washington, D.C. April 2nd to the 4th, the 2019 NCBA Legislative Conference. Together, we can do more. Details at ncba.org. What does it mean to be an American cattleman? It means you have what it takes where it counts, on the inside. At Ritchie, we understand that. It's what's on the inside that defines us. We share the same values, ingenuity, commitment, sense of pride. These are the values that built this country. They're the values that built this company, Ritchie. Proud to be a partner to the American cattleman since 1921. Each year, several businesses and individuals are honored for their commitment to the principles of the Beef Quality Assurance Program. These winners strive to provide consumers with confidence that they're buying a safe, wholesome product when they choose beef. Let's take a look at this year's winner of the Cow-Calf Award. Founded in 1952, the Matador Cattle Company raises more than 12,000 head of cattle on three ranches located in Kansas, Texas, and Montana. On each ranch, the Matador crew is committed to cattle care, and they rely on the best practices developed by the Beef Quality Assurance Program. I'm a believer in the Beef Quality Assurance Program because it gives us a formal way to convey to our customers that we want to produce the most wholesome, healthy, safest product we can. One of the things that we value greatly is our reputation. And the feedback that we get from the feed yard is, is the health of our cattle. Those cattle go to the feed yard, they're ready to perform, they're gonna grade, they're gonna do all those things because we followed those BQA standards that we've set. I am really proud of 
all, all three of our ranch crews. They have really uh, embraced and taken BQA and, and taken it to levels far beyond what I could ever envision. On Matador ranches, employees are BQA certified so they understand proper cattle handling. They work closely with their veterinarian and keep detailed records. And Matador is one of the first cow-calf operations to bring in a third-party BQA evaluator to determine where additional improvements can be made. Specifically, as a result of doing the assessments, I know that they identified some shortcomings in uh, facility design uh, at each of the locations. And so they made changes that uh, sure helped their crews uh, dramatically at, at weaning time and, and shipping time. And because of the audit, because of the changes that we made with our, our BQA uh, practices, we dramatically reduced the stress on our cattle and our people. And with the BQA program as a foundation, the Matador Cattle Company is raising the bar in producing outstanding cattle and the highest quality beef. They're not just worried about the, the next step in the food chain. They're not just worried about selling that calf at the sale barn. They're concerned about the product the consumer has on their table. So they're very thorough in their BQA, best management practices, and everything they do. I mean, there's a lot of tradition with the Matador Cattle Company, but we still are looking to improve daily. You can begin your training to earn Beef Quality Assurance Certification by using the interactive BQA online classroom. The training is tailored to each participant's industry sector and interest. Visit BQA.org for all the details. And with me now is Dr. Michael Bishop. He's the Director of Strategy with Vitelli. Dr. Bishop, uh, first of all, tell us what Vitelli is. I've never heard of the company, honestly. Well, sure, Kevin. Well, Vitelli is an in vitro fertilization company for animals. Uh, we do uh, in vitro fertilization in uh, sheep, goats, deer, but primarily in cattle. Wow. And so talk to me about what makes it different than the other IVF models that are out there. Well, the Vitelli process was developed to be a, a non-hormonal based process for ovum pickups. We can go in and uh, uh, acquire the uh, oocytes or the unfertilized eggs from the donor cow. Okay. Uh, as soon as 15 days after she calves. Wow. And up until she's 100 days pregnant. So you have a large window yeah. and we can do that weekly. And we can go in and pick up those oocytes uh, or unfertilized eggs. And cows will range in the variation of how many they give. Uh, we've had cows give up to 50, 60 oocytes, unfertilized eggs. And uh, then we take those back to the laboratory. Mm -hmm. We mature the oocytes, and then we can mate them to the bulls of your choice. And uh, we can do reverse sort on the semen, make sex-specific embryos. Wow. But the neat thing about our process is that it, it's, it compresses the time from the oocyte pickups to embryo to seven days. Sure and allows the embryo to be frozen using the direct thaw process, really? which is very, semen, very similar to semen. And you can thaw them out uh, later when you want to synchronize a bunch of cows and put the eggs in. And our eggs, uh, uh, the process that we have, we get pregnancy rates that's similar to artificial insemination. That's amazing. So basically <laughs> now, with an embryo, you can manage the genetics on the maternal side as well as the paternal side. And in, that improves the uh, return on investment and the flexibility in your operations. And one of the things that we love about the opportunities with this technology today is not only is it for the registered cattle breeders that are wanting to scale uh, on their high-end genetics, sure. but if you're a commercial cattleman and you're wanting to target uh, certain animals. For instance, you want to make F1 females. You're a her you got Hereford cows sure. and you want to make baldies and you want to select your top cows, the top cows you know you have, and then mate them to the bull of your choice. You can make all the F1 females using reverse sort that you might have a customer who would want or you would want to put in your commercial herd. Wow. So there's a lot of flexibility using IVF and it's the next iteration in combining genomics, combining all the other technologies we have with synchrony and everything else 
to really advance genetics. Really make some rapid progress. Rapid Whether you're progress. commercial or, to your point, a registered seed stock producer, it's uh, going to be an affordable way to do that, I presume. It's an affordable way. We've been doing on the high-end genetic seed stock for 20-some years. Sure. But it was more costly. The technology had not advanced in terms of its technical efficiencies. But in recent times, with the Vitelli processes, we're able to compete directly with uh, uh, artificial insemination. And uh, we think that affords the re return on investment and the flexibility that cattlemen need in today's market. Anything else new on the horizon that you anticipate? Well, we're excited about our reverse sorting of uh, semen today because yep. that allows us to select uh, either male or female uh, producing uh, sperm cells, make embryos sex selected. We see out on the future uh, the use of the IVF embryo in the combination of uh, gene, genome editing or gene editing. Right. And uh, we're, we're looking towards that. And we're also looking towards management tools to help uh, producers be more technically efficient and uh, in getting cows pregnant and getting baby calves on the ground. Will certainly help the speed of genetic progress and change in our industry. Thanks for coming and sharing with us that new exciting technology that you all are bringing to the market. Thank you, Kevin. And if you'd like more information, go to vitelli.com. Still ahead, it's time for a visit with our good friend, Baxter Black. Stay with us, we'll be right back. When you're raising cattle, you might have to solve a dozen problems before you even get through your first cup of coffee. Still, one thing we don't ever have to worry about is implant performance. We use Synvex One Grass. It's the only true 200-day trim blown acetate implant for grazing steers and heifers. And you can actually drink this before it gets cold. Ooh, that'll put hair on your chest. Do you know all you need to about working cattle? Did you know there are proven methods that can reduce stress for the animals, for you and your crew? Now there's an easy way for you to learn from the experts who can help sharpen your stockmanship and stewardship skills. In interactive sessions, you'll learn better ways to work cattle more efficiently, skills that can help put more money in your pocket. Find out more and locate an upcoming event near you at the website stockmanshipandstewardship.org. Did you know that Prefert makes over a thousand different farm, ranch, and rodeo items? And now, thanks to Prefert Direct, it's easier than ever before to get access to every item Prefert makes delivered direct to your local dealer. For more information about Prefert Direct, visit us at prefert.com. Prefert, America's number one name in farm, ranch, and rodeo. When a new calf hits the ground, his clock starts ticking. A belly full of colostrum gives him his best odds, but if he doesn't get any, his time starts running out. That's when you grab a bag of Oxford Ag Colostrum in their patented feeding system. Fill them with warm water, shake it to mix, feed it with a tube or nipple, and you are done. No bucket, no bottle, no mess, and right on time. Get yours at OxfordAg.com. Cost less than a dead calf. Howdy, I'm Noah, and to you residents of the Mount Ararat School District, I'm a livestock hauler, and I've just returned from an exotic cruise and am holding my first Opry Cruise yard sale. Many items will be offered for your agricultural or nautical fancy. All sales are final, and they're not guaranteed against mildew. Included in this yard sale, approximately 2,400 cages, including wire, wicker, horsehair, iron, rope, and screen. Oh, and we've got lots of salt block, a real collector's item, and a map. But of course, all it says is water. And for the guy out there who caught the two hamsters, we have a set of teeth floats for small rodents. Yes, we have buckets of dried poultry waste, including pigeon, pelican, buzzard, banty, canary, and condor. And we've got two dozen used, but still serviceable, manure forks. And we've got a box of assorted pills, including elephant suppositories, camel antacid boli, dramamine, and bare butazolin. 
That's right. We've got two life jackets for small mammals, size prairie dog to porcupine, a collection of specialty feeds, including koala milk, panda chow, and a bag of M&Ms. We've got a crocodile bowling gun, anteater tongue depressors, and we've got a unicorn mandible. Extinct, of course. And a small library containing books like How to Get Ahead in the New World, Even Though Fish Have a Head Start. Practical uses of animal waste from caulking and rudder grease to fertilizer and finger painting. A self-help book, How to Survive 40 Days and 40 Nights, cooped up with a man who keeps saying, Pretty good ark, eh, mother? The Illustrated Guide to Sexing Amphibians, Newts, and Domestic Fowl. Plus, Noah's Captain's Log, entitled, One More Day Like This, and I'll Never Get the Corn In. And finally, Firewood, Gopher, by the Cuban. This is Baxter Black, from out there. Thanks, Baxter. I bet that's one sale that would sure draw a crowd. Now, if you'd like to stay up to date with what's happening with Cattlemen to Cattlemen, you can find us on Facebook. We keep you posted with information about upcoming shows, farms and ranches we're visiting around the country, and we share legacy photos too. So check us out on Facebook. And we'll be back with more right after this. Stay with us. Say goodbye to your toughest pasture and rangeland weeds for good. Because one product offers season-long control, handles the widest spectrum of broadleaf weeds, and clears the way for increased forage with greater grazing flexibility. So you get more beef per acre at a cost that can't be beat. It's Grazon Next HL Herbicide. And if it's in your pastures, plain and simple, weeds won't be. industry needs people who are willing to talk to consumers and answer questions about how beef is produced, from pasture to plate. That's what the Masters of Beef Advocacy program is all about, equipping producers with the information they need to educate consumers. Brian Baxter has a look at one Nebraska rancher who has a passion for sharing the beef story. Those who work out on the land raising cattle know their life is not the same as the majority of Americans. That's especially true when your cattle operation is many miles from the nearest town. The sand hills is the middle of nowhere. We're 25 miles to town. You have to love what you do there. And um, I don't know, it's just been ingrained in me to love raising beef since I was a kid. My grandparents raised Semmental cattle. We lived on a feed yard growing up. and. I, d I don't know, I just, I can't explain why I love it. I just know I do. So I started Faith Family and Beef almost five years ago as a way to connect with those outside of agriculture and kind of give them a glimpse of everyday ranch life and teach them about beef to help them grow their confidence in all things beef. Taryn blogs on her own website, faithfamilyandbeef.com. In addition, she shares stories and photos of her family's life in the beef cattle industry with thousands of followers on Instagram, Facebook, and other social media. Those efforts resulted in Taryn winning the Beef Advocate of the Year Award and being honored on stage in front of a big crowd at the 2019 Best of Beef event. 
Well, it was a little shaky, <laughs> but it really did feel good to see um, my work recognized because blogging is kind of a lot of work, <laughs> writing and photographing and connecting and telling your story. It takes a lot of work, so it was nice to be recognized. At first, I started telling my story. I was just saying what I was doing every day on the ranch, and I wasn't reaching the people I wanted to reach, so then I started sharing more of myself and uh, motherhood and reaching out to those other moms who you know have to cook and provide for their families healthy nutritious meals and that's what i've learned the most is we have to connect on common ground and be ourselves outside of the ranch the mba or masters of beef advocacy is a free educational program managed by ncba as a contractor to the beef checkoff Taryn says the MBA program played an important part in her success. The Masters of Beef Advocacy program was a great foundation. It takes you through all the steps in the beef life cycle. You know, we're, we're a segmented industry, and I was heavily involved in the feedlot segment of our industry, and so I went cow, calf, and ranching all the way to the plate, which was really helpful when your day-to-day -day is so uh, focused in one area, it's, it's hard to remember what's going on in the other segments. Taryn encourages others to share their own stories so that people who don't know can have a better understanding of the work cattle producing families do. Earn that trust, tell your story, because if we're not telling our story, someone else will. I get lots of questions about the things that we do and I really love answering them because my whole goal is to help people become more confident or as confident in beef as I am and I'm really confident in beef. At the Best of Beef in New Orleans, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Anyone with a genuine interest in promoting the beef industry is encouraged to enroll in the Masters of Beef Advocacy Program. There's no cost to participate and you can complete the program on your own schedule. Just visit the website beef.org slash MBA. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks so much for spending time with us. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.